So this is the first uh, lesson that I've learned and it's first because it's the most profound and it's the most important. And it's a, it's a magnificent but very simple picture of a person praying to a duck. And there's a, there's a bit of a story behind this. Michael, as I said in the introductory video, has been producing cartoons for I think nigh on 50 years in Australia. He's a national treasure. Um, but in 1990, he produced a book called A Common Prayer. This is a little bit unusual for people because Michael hadn't come across in much of his work or the things he was saying as being particularly religious. And people were like, well, what's this about? What's this prayer? Um, and he wrote this beautiful introduction to his book, A Common Prayer, where in the introduction he featured this picture of a person praying to a duck. And he tried to explain what this picture meant in terms of his, his way of explaining what this picture meant. And so I'm just going to quickly read a couple of the paragraphs, not the whole thing, um, but just a couple of paragraphs. And he, says, and, he, and he says a man, but he means a person, because it could be a woman as well. He says, a man kneels before a duck in a sincere attempt to talk with it. This is a clear depiction of irrational behaviour and an important aspect of prayer. Let us put this aside for the moment and move on to the particulars. We've got a mountain bike coming through. Let's just pause a moment. <laughs> so the mountain bikes have come through. Let's go on. Let's carry on. It's, we're in the bush here, so it's fine. So he says, the act of kneeling in the picture symbolises humility. The upright stance has been abandoned because of the human attitudes and qualities it represents. Power, stature, control, rationality, worldliness, pride and ego. The kneeling man knows, as everybody does, that a proud and upright man does not and cannot talk with a duck. So the upright stance is rejected. The man kneels. He humbles himself. He comes closer to the duck. He becomes more like the duck. He does these things because it improves his chances of communicating with it. The duck in the picture symbolizes one thing and many things. Nature, instinct, feeling, beauty, innocence, the primal, the non-rational, and the mysterious unsayable. Qualities we can easily attribute to a duck, and qualities which coincidentally and remarkably we can easily attribute to the inner life of the kneeling man. So, to his spirit and his soul. The duck then in this picture can be seen as a symbol of the human spirit, and in wanting connection with this spirit is a symbolic picture of a man searching for his soul. It goes on, we don't need to read the whole thing. But this touched me very strongly when I first saw it, when Michael published it. And it's been very paramount in all of my work with TFT ever since. And that's because what I learned in all of my work is that it's absolutely fundamental if you're going to help bring change in the world, that you're absolutely connected to who you are. And the reason for that is that when you're in a room with someone and you're trying to convince them of the, the wonder of your idea and trying to bring them to change behavior, to do something different. If they're operating, thinking only from their brain or thinking about things like quarterly results, profit and loss statements, they're not going to make it. Whereas if you can connect them to fundamentally who they are, they don't want to be destroying forests. They don't want to be killing orangutans. They don't want to have slave labor in their supply chains. There may be some people out there who don't care about those things, but my experience is that many people do. And if you can connect to them fundamentally, if you help them connect to who they are, those things come out and they start changing behaviour. And this was evidenced in the work that we did with Nestle and other companies, where they said, we don't want to kill orangutans, that's not who we are. But this sort of discussion was made possible because we didn't go in there trying to shame them or blame them. If you go into these rooms connected to who you are, you inspire the other to connect to who they are. And they look at the world in a very different way. So this cartoon of a, of a person praying to a duck is fundamental, I believe, in the work that we all do to try and bring change. If we can connect to ourselves, if we can see who we are as people, our values, our soul, who we are, all our failings, 
then we go in with greater humility. We don't go in there trying to tell people how to do things. We don't go in there thinking we are right. We can go in there in a much more open way and listen to the other and inspire the other to listen to us. And I think that's the key lesson that I've learned through all of my work. So this first slide is really about inspiring you all to understand who you are, get connected to that, and live from that place every moment of your life. It's a struggle, and Michael says that in his introduction. It's a lifetime struggle, because we don't always make it. Things can knock us off course. But if we can come back to that place and really live from who we are inside, we have a far greater chance of helping the world and helping other people in the world to be a better place. So that's the first one. Thank you.